I'm like, why do you need the money? I gotta take my donkey to the saloon. <laughs> I had a fantasy about like, I would miss the rapture because I would probably hadn't asked for forgiveness quick enough. Then I would get my life together and I would really serve the Lord. And I would just like, I would be a warrior during the great tribulation. Tells you a little bit how big my ego was at a young age. If I keep going down the path, divorce, my kids just go sideways and everything continues on and, I, and I'm just a brutal wreck. I'm you may single-handedly be turning more kids from Christianity than anything else that is happening in their lives right now. Honda, how about, how about a Honda, Honda shit about a Honda? Honda. How about a Honda shit about You're a Honda. You're doing it! You're d- oh. Hey everybody, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. I'm Jeff. It's episode 227. Andy, how's it going? It's going. Yeah. <laughs> Blah. Buh. Hey, Zach? Women want to be us and men want to be with us. <laughs> Jeff? It ain't us. <laughs> Jesus, I'm drinking again. Oh my God, you say again like it ever stopped. <laughs> again. Right out of the gate, I'm drinking again, again. Hey Jeff, I'm drinking. Yes, Zach. Jeff, can you do me a favor? Will you peel this orange for me? Sh- shut up. Will you? Ooh. Oh, wow. You passed the test. You guys heard about this? No. It's the latest. You oh, don't have God. to actually do that. Jeez. Put that, throw it in the trash. Uh, or add it to your drink. The latest in TikTok majesty is the orange peel test. If you're in a relationship with somebody and they come to you and they're filming you, can you peel this orange? How you react to that question determines whether or not they should stay with you or some version of that, some bullshit like that. When are we getting married? When, yeah. When do you stay together? And when don't you technically you didn't pass the test? Cause he looked at me like, what the F, but then he did it, but then he did it. <laughs> so if he would have said no, then you can't be uh, married. Maybe. I don't know, but that's the thing. These tests one, if you're doing a test like this, like, I don't know, maybe you shouldn't be in the relationship anyway. Anyway, is this I mean, 2024's Tide Pod challenge? A, a version of it. <laughs> Zach, would you, you ate the Tide Pod. He's, Zach, you did it. He would have. That proves you, it. Would you eat the head off of this orange? <laughs> no. Oh, that's it. Sorry, We're divorcing. That orange looks like it has a toupee. We'll just have to stay. <laughs> that was the point. Anyways, I thought that was. I don't know. It, apparently, it blew up on tic, on the TikToks. It, people going to their boyfriends and girlfriends. Hey, well, mostly girls going to boys. I'm like. Would you peel Le- this orange? Yeah. And if they react like, oh, yeah, sure. Without even thinking about it, they're good. But if they struggle with it or they turn it down, the only problem with this is if I feel like I'm being tested, I'm going to automatically say no. Like, and Lisa knows that. she's She knows better than to pull that stuff with me. I'll be like, <clears throat> I, I anytime somebody wants something like that's manipulative or passive aggressive like that, I'm going to go the other direction. I'm going to go sit in my own <laughs> passive aggression. I think you're totally wrong. This is clearly a great way to uh, (laughs) figure out if you've got the right relationship or not. Zach, get me a drink. Keep keep doing it. Yeah. Okay. Is this person willing to peel fruit for me? Nope. I got questions. It's not going to work. I'm sorry. GTFO. Anywho. So that's fun. Coming up, listeners, we've got a live baptism, and then we're we're also going to hear about some secret sins. Um. And one of us is going to wash one of us feet in real time. Is that really going to happen? You know, I know we talked about it. That's coming up on the podcast. Just one of the feet, though. Just, yes. <laughs> one of us will wash one, one of ours. One foot. One foot. Yeah. And to be ter- determined later, which oh. foot, it's, you know, we'll oh, figure that I out. I thought we were done. A big toe. Just a big toe. Just wash that big. It's easier. You can kind of get the hand that in there. That feels grosser. That feels grosser. Also, which one of us has a foot fetish? I think we answered that question. Yeah, that's the next TikTok challenge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jeff, what do we got? I mean, I want to say you got me thinking, uh, uh, I don't know, you know, peel the orange, like girls going to the boys and saying, hey, you know, peel the orange. Um, this evening, my, this is a faux pas. Uh, I, gosh darn spell checker. Uh, I texted or my daughter freshman daughter texts me and she's like um send me some money and just demanding 
Give me my money. I want my I want my allowance. I'm like I'm, I'm not giving. You, it's not Friday. You're not getting. Well, I'm, you know, I'm I'm not. I don't need anything for this weekend. So just give me to me today. I'm like what. I like how your daughter sounds like an old prospector in this scenario. <laughs> I want my money. You'll give it to me. Oh. Okay, I want to say that that's what it feels oh, like, though. Dynamite. Me, I've been working all week. Even money. I'm like, you've done nothing. You get it on Friday. She t- and I, I sent her a text. I'm like, she, I'm like, why do you need the money? I gotta take my donkey to the saloon. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> I'm like uh, the donkey or the saloon part. <laughs> well, she has to call him when he's at the saloon. Yeah, you're you're the donkey in this scenario, aren't you? <laughs> She's like, I need money because I'm going out with friends and uh, you know we're gonna buy food. And I'm like, go go home and make a BLT. But it actually nice. texted her, go home and make a boy. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> what? Uh, I looked at it, and I'm, la- I'm in the middle of drinking, uh, <laughs> in the middle of a, a <laughs> restaurant, when, and I'm sitting there laughing hysterically. And the lady's looking at me behind the bar, like, "What's going on?" And I'm Cut like, "Cut him off! Cut him off! It's okay. <laughs> it's okay." All right. Well, uh, BLT. <clears throat> I'm in BLT. We'll have a. Premarital pregnancy update in the future episodes, <laughs> listener, watcher. Uh, all right. Well, Jeff, you've got a sheet of paper in front of you. I do have a sheet of paper. Let's hammer this thing it's out. It's a big sheet. It's getting wetter and wetter. It, it is. Um, so we, we've talked about this, just our histories. Like, how did, how did we... Uh, over the years. Yeah, over the years. And of our just faith and Christianity. So, um, you know, the, the question is, um, you know, like how, how did you become a Christian? Like when was that moment in time um, outside of BLTs? And when did you stop being a Christian? Ooh. And are you even are you even a Christian? <clears throat> okay. Uh, and does it matter? So, sorry. This is the time I need to talk to David, yeah. our producer, and tell him to just double deep whole, whole, on the ones and out. zeros. Yes. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for being back, man. Happy to be here. I love you guys. Yeah. Keep switching those uh, cameras. Yeah. There you go. Uh, let's do another one. There you are. Let's see yeah. what. Uh, try another one. Let's do it. Oh, that's, that's number two. That one's good. Uh-huh. I like yeah. that one. Oh, yeah. I'm smiling. I'm just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so years ago, I can remember like we uh, we shared stories of tons of stories of family and Christianity and coming to Jesus and all all of that. But like you know, it seems like we've got new listeners. Yeah, it's a good one to come back to. It is as it's we're a- ramping up YouTube's. That's right. It is. So Zach, oh, you're going with me? Okay. Um, how did you become a Christian? Jeff, I'm really glad you asked me this question. Is it a great question? No. Uh, <laughs> I I don't remember becoming a Christian. I'm one of those, you just always remember that you went to church and you were a Christian. I definitely asked to get saved multiple times, usually as a, teen- as a, kid? Okay. As a teenager or a young teenager. Let's just call it puberty. This is where secret sins come in the equation. Puberty. Um what are you doing in the bathroom, Zach? So I grew up in the uh, non-denominational. Can't believe my shower's not I'm pregnant. Oranges. You stepped on my line. <laughs> Sorry. That's why you're wearing headphones, Jeff. What? I can't hear you. Uh, so Southern California, sort of Calvary Chapel adjacent, Coast Hills. These are big, big known churches in Southern California. Um, not those specifically, but. Uh, a, a church like that, non-denominational, um, co- very conservative, not fundamentalist. I kind of thought it was like, as I look back, I thought it was, but really there's other parts of the country where fundamentalist really means a thing. And these guys uh, put the fun and fundamental. Yeah. So on a side note, where would that, where would that be? Where would fundamentalist be as a part of Southern Baptist. Southern Baptist. Okay. Dude, I got to touch this. Sorry. 
<laughs> All right, man. So that's like so I grew up, I grew up in it, and I, no joke. So it's emphasis on end times. Jesus could come back anytime, imminently, as most of those places still preach. Uh, afraid of the rapture slash excited for the rapture. Afraid I would miss the rapture. Usually post usually in the refractory period because secret sins. Uh-oh. So as a teenager, no joke. It's like, <laughs> please, I just want to make sure that I'm saved. You, you pray the prayer again and again and again. Oh my I used to have rapture fantasies too of missing the rapture. What? Not erotic. I just imagined you <laughs> finishing and, then, about and then poking your head out of your bedroom and be like, hey, you guys still there? You guys still here? <laughs> oh shit, that was close. <laughs> Her mom, mom and dad left on a date. There's no answer. Oh God, my God. Hello? 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 The car's not even in the driveway. Well, the car's not in the driveway. Is that good or bad? I don't know. Do cars go to heaven? I don't know. I did see a video of... <laughs> I'm going to drink to that. The parents left outfits out on the stairs. Oh, yeah. Uh, and one of their kids sees it and freaks out. And they did it as a joke, but I'm like, that's... that's there's legit trauma around rapture scares and missing it and... You get home from school and your family's not there. Well, he, maybe uh, they're trying to teach them good theology. Maybe. <laughs> maybe they're trying to break them free of rapture, which isn't really exactly in the Bible. So, so that's, I, I had a version of that and no joke did. I had a fantasy about like, I would miss the rapture because I would probably hadn't asked for forgiveness quick enough. Um, and then I would get my life together and I would really serve the Lord. And I would just like, I would be a warrior during the great tribulation. The, and this just tells you a little bit how big my ego was at a young age. How long was your hair at this point? <laughs> it's like playing Lord uh, of the Rings. Short. Long, uh, long hair came uh, after high school. Okay. So always grew up in it. And I don't know if we'll get to where we're at now, but I'll just leave it there for now. I've always been saved, Jeff. That's, these days i don't know I, I i talked to my wife about this and i'm like when did you You're kidding be, when did you become a christian she's like i was born into it i'm like explain she's like i'm american aren't i oh, that's Mar- how it works american you i'm bar- a wasp you born in america you become a christian now if chad is listening wasp is white, white anglo-saxon protestant, protestant. <laughs> Anyway, I like okay. So you're born into it, but it's like my family's Catholic or my family's Christian or Protestant or Lutheran, and so that's what I am. And so at some point, you know, as she spoke, she's like, and then when I became a teenager, I got baptized as a teenager, and that, you know, that's when I my faith became mine. So I'm like, okay, so that's that is definitely not how I became a Christian um, because I got brought up in the <laughs> stay on target, Jeff, that stay was on te- target. That was a test and you failed. <laughs> Jesus wanted you to be focused on him the whole time and you lost it. With- I need to get my fidget spinner back. <laughs> all right so you grew up catholic though catholic family yeah but that you don't count that i mean i certainly wasn't a christian when i look back i'm like i'm not exactly sure what was going on there it was more i don't know what my parents were doing but um <clears throat> like if somebody asked me like how did you become a christian i'd be like you know, I was like 37, 38. I'm like, I guess I just accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior is the easy question. But ultimately, it's like... Were you at Mountain View at the time? Y- well, yes. I mean, ultimately, that moment of me becoming a Christian is I'm sitting in a church that I've never been to, which was Mountain View, surrounded by people that I don't know, except my wife and some neighbors, and just being in the darkest place and thinking um, this, like, what have I done with my fucking life? Like Mm -hmm. I've wasted my life. Like I've wasted relationships. I have no friends or anything like that. And it was just brutal. And I'm just in tears. Um, And just thinking like I've used people as, Mm. as inventory, as resources so I could get ahead and was it during prayer during worship 
<laughs> no, I mean, during the service, like when you come to this re- realization, it, it sounds like you had, you had sort of the God experience that a lot of people like myself have there, never had. I mean, there was... Yeah, set the table. <laughs> so I've never been... I think I was to church once. Somebody invited me to a Christian church. Before that, had been a Catholic church, and definitely not Christian. That's what Jeff is saying. It's all ceremonies and stuff, and I'm like, when are the donuts? It's still a part of the church. Can I, can we Ooh. get the donuts at the end? Um, why do we have to get up and down? Do I have to go? Why are people going getting that wafer? Um, that was my Catholic upbringing, um, and, but walking into which just to go back, like thinking like, yeah, I was raised Catholic and everything was perfect. And then my parents divorced and it's just, it's just carnage um, and really destroyed myself and my sister. So we move on in life, but, you know, fast forward to, um, you know, going to a church that I'm just, just foreign. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I'm, it's the darkest place in my life. Like I'm, Works horrible. Relationships are horrible. I have no friends. Just I, there's nobody to rely on. And it's the first time that you're at Mountain View, your first yep. visit there. Yep. And so this is Todd speaking at the time, right? Yep. And I yep. had no idea who he was. I just knew that the neighbor who brought us, it was his brother. All right. For the listener, Todd was his former pastor for 24 plus years at, at our yep. church that we'd gone to. So, Todd speaking, you were brought by a neighbor, you said? Mm-hmm. And they're not paying us to, to do this. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I swear. Because I, I didn't get this experience. Otherwise, you know. And uh, when you... <laughs> I had to put a quarter at the slot. Oh. <laughs> what made you go when you, you were invited? What made you say yes? Uh, I... So we had moved to an area where we live now and my wife had gone to a park and had met, uh, had befriended um, this person who ended up becoming our, our family friends um, and her and her husband were like, uh, Hey, let's go hang out. We went to big bear and kind of, you know, it was a kind of the start of a friendship. And then they're like, you should come to, you know, well, actually my wife came home one day and she said, um, Hey, so-and-so invited us to go to church. I'm like, gross. I'm like, okay. Um, and what was going through your mind then though? Desperation. Like to get out of it? Just not, no, 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 not to get out. You just needed something like your life needed something. It was just a black hole. It was a void in my world. But your, so your reaction to the inviting them inviting you to church was positive? My wife invited me. So my wife at the time my, my wife and I our relationship, our <laughs> You're marriage. Still married. Yeah. Yeah. Back then his, his wife at the time. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tanya. Oh, it is gosh. still Tanya, right? My fidget spinner back. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> At the time, your wife invited you, is what you meant to say. I'll fix this. I think that orange has gone bad. <laughs> Stop. Anyway, um, <clears throat> look what fidgeting gets you. Yeah. We're really doing this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, no, I mean, at the time, not too not too much, uh, maybe a month or two, I a lack of better phrase. I'm like, I have no words right now. Okay. Um, but ultimately I lost a, jo- I lost a job. I had a job, my teaching job, but the other job I had lost because it was just the way I was acting and communicating and treating people was awful. And it was just, it had caught up to me. So I'm in a black hole, like financially things are bad. My relationship with my wife's bad. Right. I'm like, I'm just a terrible father. I'm like, what am I doing? I have no friends. And so we're at church and, and just, I'm, but before that, yeah, you got hit. Me, hey, do you, wanna, yeah, do you want to? Yeah, what's your, what's your initial you, reaction when she says, "Do you want to go to church?" Yes, like it was almost you knew you knew you needed something. It was almost immediate. Like something. my wife's asking me to do something with her. Yes, um, because I just been, you guys were disconnected. Yeah, and I've been yearning for like where are the answers in yeah. all this? I need to connect dots because right now I'm in a black abyss There's can i nothing can i say that uh and so i will say i asked but i'm just gonna say um <laughs> death and resurrection and marriage it's a, a two-parter way back in our podcast archives 
if you're just catching up with us now or you're a new YouTube subscriber, that's all audio stuff and it's in your podcast feeds. You have to search it. I don't know which episode it is. Just but like that's 30 like 30 or 40. That's it's like three or there. three or four hours of Jeff and Tanya, Tanya on the podcast talking about this. And one of the descriptors you used for your life and slash marriage at the time was a, a train, a freight train crashing off the Empire State Building. Uh, I'm butchering it, but you, you are butchering it. it w- onto a school bus of preschool children, <laughs> yeah. which is heading into the river, <laughs> which is made of fire. Stop, yeah. you guys. You're giving me COVID. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, it was brutal. We were in a bad spot, but in that, yes, let's go. I want to go to church. So we go and I'm sitting there and at some point during worship, which the only time I've ever been in a Christian church was at harvest with, uh, Greg Laurie. Yeah. Greg Laurie. And speaking of the rapture, coincidentally, it's got a man's and a woman's name. The the message he was giving that day was on marriage. Lori. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Squirrel, I'm sorry. Squirrel. <laughs> it's just that you've been talking for so long. <laughs> God, Zach won't let me talk. <laughs> hey, uh, David Eaton, can you pass the salad dressing? <laughs> <laughs> it is. The, sal- the word salad is being served. It's tasty. Is that We're Italian? Salad dressing? <laughs> we, we can't do justice to that story. We're not good. We don't have to redo the whole story. But you had that You and worship it. You got hammered. Like in the good way. There's you had moment. the God experience. I'm God yeah, hammered you. I'm in tears. I and right there I'm like I'm I'm a broken person. I just think of like ESPN uh years ago I used to watch like monster Ba-da-da. Yeah. Monster trucks. But they had tractor poles on top of that and tractor poles were where the tractor would back up and just hook itself to a sled and it was like twenty feet long of steel and it had this blade in front. They would hook it to the tractor. That tractor had to go three hundred feet and it's like towards the finish line. And the harder that tractor went, the more that sled would pull and dig down into the ground with the that the pan. It was like a snowmobile or it's not a snowmobile, a, a snowplow, like a big giant tractor snowplow, just digging in the ground and throwing crap everywhere. It was like, that was me. Cause when you get to the end and everything just seizes up and you can't go anywhere, like the tractor just stops and it's the wheels are spinning and the engine's just shooting fire out of the top. Of the this harder thing. you try to do yeah. the thing that you, like, this yeah. it's like, that's me. I was I was sitting there in church going, I'm, my wheels have been spinning, trying to search for something. You were done. I got nothing. You were- I, I'm empty. I'm going nowhere. I'm in a black hole. And at that moment, I'm next thing I know, I'm in, just in tears. Like, Jesus, take the I'm wheel in and bridge this gap to something better because I've got nothing and I've been working my was butt that, off. Was that uh, one of the things I love about your story, Jeff, is because I... I think I have more friends who are like Zach who grew up in the church than friends who have your experience who came to know Jesus later in life. They and said there's not many. Like it's a rare thing to accept Jesus in the thirties or forties. Well, you were raised in Cuba as a small child, which is makes sense why you weren't a Christian before, because if you were an American, then you would have definitely been again, he was only Catholic. Born again is basically born American. Anyway, his opinion does not rapidly depend on world property. If you look at statistics, that's what everyone thinks. Everyone in America thinks they're Christians. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, the the point that's interesting to me is is your. I feel like your experience is very pure, and that you were old enough to kind of have some sort of perspective of there was there was a time in your life where this didn't exist where you're where you didn't have an encounter with god you didn't know what the holy spirit was you didn't have a relationship with jesus and then at all and then it changes for you it sounds like it changes in a moment yeah and can you describe i mean would you say that you felt like the holy spirit was engaging you in that moment now that you look back absolutely i mean there's if you if you think of the the tractor reference it's like when they take that sled off that 
with all that burden and weight, like the tractor can just explode out of there and take off. And, and essentially that's what happened in that moment. It was like, I literally like, t- like, I can't do this anymore. I can't do any of this. I can't do life. I can't do relationships. I, I've got nothing. I'm like, there's something that's just happened and I I can't put a finger on it, but it's got me all emotional and in tears. And I've just have hid behind a wall forever and ever that I did that feel foreign when you had that experience. Did it feel weird? Did it feel good? What it felt? (sighs) I mean, you're with strangers at this point, right? Yeah, but nope. But I, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm, I was by myself. I was around 150 people and I was by myself. Yeah. And, but by myself with, with God and, and not knowing what is happening. Like, what is going on here? I, I don't know. I can't explain that. And people ask, like, was uh, it scary at all? No. It was confusing. It was, it was emotional and exciting. Hmm. And uh, take this. Mm. and and without anybody ever saying coming to the like when i look back nobody ever came to the stage and i had never heard it before like hey does anybody want to give their life for something happened in that moment where i have no idea i it was miraculous i'm like i i can't like just going back right now i'm like i'm like how did that happen and because if i keep going down the path divorce my kids just go sideways and everything continues on and and I'm just a brutal wreck. I probably lose my, my, the good job that I, that I still have, but it just, that I just can't, it's unexplainable. Like the Holy spirit moment. I'm like, I, I, when people like the chosen people, I'm like, I don't know if I'm chosen or not, but I love that you know, God just kept knocking yeah. like, and I was able to finally be like, F- I can't do this. Like for me and anybody who knows me, I'm not that type of person. Like I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to get it done. Nobody's going to stop me. Mm-hmm. But in that moment, it was like, stop. You, you don't have it. I have it. Do you want it? And I'm like, let's go. Dude, and- what I love about that is you're, I feel like you're, experience is so pure when you describe that there's no there's no person manipulating the situation for you it's it like you describe it as is you and it's god there may be 150 people around but you're blind to that in the moment you, you even said there's no one standing up on stage like hey if you're ready to say the prayer here are the words no one's walking you through this and so it's this I, I just love the fact that you have this very it is it's just a very pure experience and I just, I, and what's weird is it was so, it was so long ago and I'm still to this day when I think about it, I'm like, I'm emotional and I, I'm, yeah. it just takes me back to that moment. And I'm like, I just literally thank God, like saving me, saving everything in my life. Like I'd probably just be destitute and with nothing because my 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 wife i mean that saved us and my wife she she's my other half and she makes me better and and without that i'm i'm just running sure i'm running into no man's land and you know so that i I, I can't it's (laughs) that's good i I don't know what else is all right fine you win the conversion experience it doesn't even matter what i say i'm not even going to answer this question this one's way better oh my god good job you know what (laughs) jeff what i love about that is that you're you're literally trying to the emotion is clear and you're trying to distill it down for us in a way that like has the impact that it had to you and you can't do that that that's the beauty of like the mystical experience you can, but I feel like I'm catch. I am catching. We're, we're some getting. Of, we're getting a little bit. We're we're in the blast zone right now. The splash zone. Splash zone. That's what it's it, called. And it ma- it, it matters. Like those experiences matter. Like there are some Christians that you know the whole trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. All those things. Like the emphasis on like no, you can't trust your experience. You can't trust your experience. I disagree with that. I agree and I disagree. It's like 
experience matters. Test your experience. If your experience is causing harm to others or your truth as you see it, you'd want to check that. But experience matters and it obviously changed you. And I got a, I got one experience I'm not going to talk about right now. Maybe we'll get to it later. But on my deconstruction journey where I did have a, sort of an experience like that where the, the tears and like, I don't know how to explain this, but... Mm. It's, it's a moment for me and I can try to explain it to other people like you did. And I think you did a good job. Um, and the tractor pull, that's, that's your best metaphor ever. If you, like, if you don't know, listener and watcher, Jeff's metaphors are usually terrible. They don't make sense <laughs> at all. But, but the tractor metaphor <clears throat> makes perfect sense. Like the closer that thing, the, the harder the you harder try. The harder it pulls. The cl- oh, yeah. yeah this, it, it digs in deeper. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. And that's why we're going to call you Tractor Pearson. <laughs> that's, that's so bad. That I, I think the tears are just because I my I knew my life was going to be better from that moment. Yeah. That's that was it. Well, it also sounds like it was a point of you just like finally surrendering. <laughs> yeah, giving giving in. And I knew no I knew, I knew you no, didn't know the language no the christianese like no you, like yeah you're that's why i think it's cool because it is so pure it's not like you were tainted by like oh these are the things that you're supposed to do these are the four spiritual laws i've been taught how to do this and someone walked me through all these steps it was just the holy spirit god i i'm reminded i think it's uh augustine who's he describes uh god as the hound of heaven which is like one of my favorite metaphors that he's just chasing you down like it's right. He's right behind you the whole time, ready, ready for the moment that you, you know, say yes when you get invited to church or whatever the moment is for you. But that hand of heaven metaphor, like, popped in my head as you were describing that, and he finally bit you in the ass. God, that's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it is jolting though, in a uh, good way. Getting bit in the ass or the. Uh, I mean, in general, yeah, but but we'll do a butt play episode another time. So, <laughs> so stupid. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna keep mine super short. Um, I similarly was born uh, into a Christian family, um, and yes, I prayed the prayer multiple times. The one that sticks out to me, the funny one, was at the Kern County Fair. There was like a. It was literally like a small trailer, but it was a trailer slash uh, like covered wagon almost. I'm, I'm trying to remember it. It's been a while. I was maybe six years old. Ooh. But I remember that the real draw to going and doing this was they would give you one of those mini Bibles. And so I was like, oh, I'm, I get to get one of those. And I went in there and it was like just me and some older woman and she was having me pray the prayer. And at this point, I was like, I think I've done this already, but I'll do it. And I'll, I'll get the mini Bible. That was like the, the thing that. <laughs> the carrot at the end of the stick. Yes, it was the carrot at the end of the stick. Um, and back when your eyes could read that thing too. Yeah. Now I'd be like, this is useless. <clears throat> uh, you put it on a selfie stick. That, yeah. <laughs> That's what selfie sticks are used for now. Mini That's the last bi- one you saw. Mini one. Bibles. <laughs> mini Bibles. <laughs> uh, anyway, the um, the moment, though, that I feel like uh, we've talked about this previously, uh, moving from inherited faith. Hey, my, I grew up, my family went to church. I went to church. I was a Christian because my family was a Christian. We're Christians. Um was it was actually a summer camp and i did this this thing in summer camp where it was like this halfway between staff and halfway between being a camper you were you were volunteer and you were working the whole time but it was also like this kind of like concentrated leadership thing um which felt cool to be a part of you had to like apply for it and like write an essay and everything like that and um some skin in the game you had to have some yeah they didn't just accept anybody only the best potential christians could be involved (laughs) only the best skin yeah (laughs) can you read mini bibles still yeah if you can and you can dig a ditch we're interested anyway uh i went to this camp it was called calvin crest it was up near yosemite in oakhurst and uh super cool camp actually bear grills 
uh, leased a section of their land for a while and was running like an, his outdoor camps up there, which was pretty cool. So I have, I have great memories there. I also have terrible memories there. Specifically, Whoa. fourth grade, they had this camp called uh, Sherwood Forest where you got to like dress up like you were the Sherwood in Forest. Sherwood. It was super cool. I had a dick for a, a counselor. His name was Channing. I still remember it. It's fourth grade. I still remember that his name was Channing. Shit, I hate that. And you got to like kind of invent your name and you could do like puns on your name. His pun name, this is how much I hate this asshole. His pun name was Summon Channing Evening. What a dick. I'm throwing up in my mouth. Anyway, this guy would not let us Wait, tell ghost stories at that's night. That's what he came up with? Yeah, that's what he that's came what up with. That's what he chose. He chose that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> emphasis, on, emphasis on he. Anyway, uh, he wouldn't let us tell ghost stories at night and got mad at us and then made us run laps or, uh, the next day. Woke us up early in the morning before breakfast. And I'm like, dude, you may single-handedly be turning more kids Guess. from Christianity than anything else that is happening in their lives right now. Anyway, mm. being a part of this program in my sophomore year in high school was, um, was kind of the jumping off moment that I was like, wait a minute, I'm engaging with Jesus in a different way than I had previously. And I just remember that being special and, and feeling it felt different. It felt like it was, uh, it wasn't just handed to me. And it also felt like I was kind of like leveling up in just my knowledge and understanding and ability to kind of like grasp what was going on. Um, and so that was, that was a pretty special moment. And then, you know, I think along the way to like college, I had moments like that as well with friends who, um, would challenge me and, and, and even just learning more deeply. Um, so what, so it was like, maybe that my answer to the question, the question would be a little bit different. It's like, not when did you become a Christian, but like how, in what ways, like over time, how did you become a Christian is probably the better way that I would answer that. Kind of like, how did you mature in your Christianity and your faith? Yeah. Cause again, like growing up in it, there's, I'm just hand it's handed to me. I'm showing up there. Although I can't remember if I've told this before, dude, 10 years old, uh, my sister would have been eight. We're going to this church. It's a Presbyterian church and it's very Presbyterian, which means like if you've ever been to one of those uh, Presbyterian churches are awesome. Um, do you remember the name? The- yeah, I do. Northminster. That's it. Northminster Presbyterian Church. Okay, that's normal. Like they weren't preppy. <laughs> oh well, I, there's I, oh. some of those churches that are that are really rigid. They have wild names like around here. There's one Presbyterian Church of the Master. Oh yeah, stuff Pecom. like that. Uh, but yeah. the Presbys are they're they're not the preppies, but the Presbys are they're big time. So I remember at one point right, David. talking with my parents and saying, <laughs> <laughs> David nodded. Are the Presby's, are those awards? Yeah. <laughs> I got my first Presby. I'm well, up for it. I'm, I'm up, up for, for my first Presby. I'm up for three Presby's this year. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Taylor Swift will probably win that too. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember sitting with my parents and we somehow we were, we were complaining a little bit about church. And I said, it's so boring. Why do we even go? And they went, Yeah. Why do we even go? And we stopped going for a while. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I know. Drop right? the mic. Can Drop you the believe mic? it? We did. <laughs> you know what the that's a Dude, be. This was ahead of their time. What so they, were your parents just checking boxes too? What? Well, I think I think they just kind of looked at it and were like, "Well, maybe it was one of these things." Like, hey. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done this. Well, you guys have been at, at Mountain View the whole time. I've been to lots of different churches, and and one of the one of the evaluations. Yeah, I've been to so Did many churches. You guys, you yeah. may not know that I've been to so many churches. <laughs> anyway, church slut. <laughs> but one of the the math loyalty not the math that happens sometimes is, uh, hey, if my kids are happy, that's more important than if I'm happy. And so I think that's where my parents were at. And the moment that I like explained to them, like, Hey, I'm not happy. They went, well, we've been hating. Uh, they didn't say we've been hating this place, but anyway, mm. 
transition from that to at some point in time i do remember us watching <laughs> we did church at home we would turn on a televangelist oh. oh let's play a little game see if you guys can guess who the televangelist was that we would watch this is uh the years, this yeah. is going to be late 80s i'm going to say like between 87 and 90. Well, that's the bald. The kind Could of have been Pat, Ro- Pat Robertson. No. Close. Are, are we talking? Okay. Close. I'm going with the. Uh, he, was he kind of. I uh-huh. want to say Indian, but he wasn't Indian. Oh, no. I know who you're thinking Benny about. Benny Hen. Yeah. No, no, no. That's. Uh, whoa. That's oh, extreme. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> We're talking about Christian televangelists. Yeah, actual Jeff. Christians, Jeff. <laughs> no, it was Robert Schuler. Okay. Oh, Bob, yeah. Bob, Bob Schuler. Bob Schuler, the Crystal Cathedral. And I remember actually once we took a trip to go see like, it was the Christmas thing and they had live animals and we went to go see that. So that I, we took a break for a while and then I, yeah, and then I went to a, a Assemblies of God Church for a little while as a junior high and high schooler. That Whoa. was fun. Yeah, that's like dancing and stuff? Party time. Yeah. There wasn't dancing, but there was a lot of like about a Honda shit about a Hyundai going on yeah yep. pass out the grape drink well yeah i don't know what you just said <laughs> it's, it's oh, spoken tongues that's how Jeff? you speak in tongues your first oh, time? hold on no one's taught you how to speak in tongues <laughs> let me sometimes my wife teaches me how to speak in tongues. <laughs> do you remember what i said to open the last episode whoa <laughs> I, I, I was thinking about what I was going to say. I missed Whoa. what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have bought a Honda. Yeah. Okay. So the the way that you speak in tongues, it's not that hard. What you say is, and repeat after me. I bought a Honda. I, I bought, bought a Honda. Honda. I should have bought a Honda. I should have bought a Honda. I bought a Honda. I bought, I bought a, a Honda. Honda. I should have bought a Honda. I should have bought a Honda. I bought a Honda. I should have bought a Honda. I bought a Honda. I should have bought a Honda. Repeat. Come on. Let's do it yep. fast all together right now. I, I bought a Honda. I should have bought a Honda. I bought a Honda. I should have bought a Honda. I bought a Honda. I should have bought a Honda. You're doing it. You're doing it. Yes. Congratulations, Jeff. You now can speak in tongues. Uh, now I will get a Toyota. Oh, sorry. Whoa. We're going to edit that out. This moment in racism brought to you by... <laughs> oh my gosh Here, just hold the orange yeah just put that in Stop your mouth talking just for a while put, just sit the next play out champ <clears throat> anyway yeah so that was um i think that's enough i think we've covered that one <laughs> well do you do you guys um are you comfortable with the label of christian that was one of the, these on the list like like, has anything changed for you, Jeff? Would you consider your faith more or less as you were, as you received it originally? Yeah, my faith is still the same. Am I comfortable with your... Completely messing up at times? Yes. But I know... We just got an example of that. I know, so. they got, <laughs> I know that God's got me. The racist sin. <laughs> you guys need to go watch old 80s commercials. Actually, I don't think doing bad accents is racist, but... I understand why people, some people might be offended, but, but I'm not personally offended. But I know Funny. It, I'm, I'm just following Dave Chappelle's uh, role model. I am Dave Chappelle's role model. Wait, he's my role model? I, I know. forget it. Anyway, uh, no, nothing has changed in my faith. He's the same that he was. He hasn't matured at all. He hasn't changed. Okay. He's Noted. the same. He's a baby Christian as he was 10 years ago. Write that down, David. Okay, thanks. Moving Mark on. Mark that. Uh, <laughs> Christian check. Okay. Baby Christian. I will say after... Do you know who Peter was? After accepting Christ, six months later, I kind of came to a realization like I there's so much more to this following Jesus that I knew. Um, it wasn't just like lifting things, but it was, you know, forgiveness and um, letting things go and realizing that I had just grudges against people and I was just holding them accountable. And I didn't want to let that go. And that was the, that was the, you know, thousands of pounds of, you know, tracker, tractor yeah. uh, pole sled that I was, I was, you know, pulling around, but it was just, you know, just watching all of those relationships mend and then, being where I am today, it's it's a good dude. I feel like it's a good thing. I feel like sometimes uh, becoming a Christian is like 
going into a house and opening a door and realizing that you're in the house of a hoarder and that that room is just stacked wall to wall with crap and you're like i never went into that room before i didn't even know this room existed oh boy i'm gonna have to start emptying this room over time an overwhelming feeling yeah like just picturing that and putting myself in that spot it's overwhelming that that's it's it's a parallel to kind of where i was where'd all these bikes come from <laughs> Boy. I once I once saw this uh, episode of Hoarders, and this lady had a uh, literal a, Hoarders. Yeah, she had a room stacked to the to the ceiling with bikes. What? Just stacked bikes, like five or six bikes. Yeah, and she named them all Jeff's sin. <laughs> <laughs> is there a BMX in there? <laughs> the bad, I mean, bad things. Is that BMX? Hey man, is there a mongoose? <laughs> Was there a haro? I could not. Did they go. have a haro? No, I couldn't. Mongoose, go. mongoose, or a haro? Maybe. No. Schwinn, Schwinn Jeez. predator. I had a Schwinn predator. Dude, you're in a different. How old are you? Forty five. Okay. So Jeff put the sin in Schwinn. Jeff's like my bikes had the big giant wheel <laughs> and the tiny little one behind it. <laughs> what are those? And also a tractor trailer with mud. He pulled it with the bike. And the further he pedaled, the farther <laughs> the thing went up with the mud. And then he kind of it puts the... Oh. Uh, <laughs> hey, I just opened this. Uh, can I just... Real yeah, quick. You can do whatever you want. This is unofficial. Oh. It's not Una- unofficial. Uh, We're going to hold them to yeah, it. Yeah. There Unofi- you go. Unofficial sponsorship. Get that on camera. Docent Brewing Company in San Juan Capistrano, California. It's... This is a super tonic coffee oatmeal stout. That's disgusting title. As Dave Chappelle might say, the darkness. Where'd you put the other can? And the other can's right behind you. Please tell me you have Gimme. Gimme IPA. Oh, it's all out. Sorry. Oh, God. Okay, we'll do this one right here. Can I have a sip? Yeah. There we go. There we go. You're on there. So. Oh, guess what's fun? The cans look the same, except for some like writing on the side. It doesn't matter. Here you go, Docent. We paid for this one. I don't want to pay for the next one. That's right. So shout out to Casey Moncton and Kayla Swanberg, friends of the show. Yeah, for not giving us free beer. You're welcome. Good job, guys. I'm not going to say they've never given us free beer, but for their bosses, they've never given us free beer. Yeah. Anyway, so... <sighs> Do you say, like being a Christian? I don't... The, I don't like... I'm uncomfortable with the label Christian sometimes. Uh, you know how... So, Why? Every day somebody asks me, you're not a Christian, are you? I'm just kidding. That never happens. But <laughs> you're not one of the crushers, are you? I hope you're not. Because if you were, you're not going to clean my pool. <laughs> <laughs> my, cool, my pool is completely cleaned by sinners and atheists. So Jeff's there. Yeah. With his bikes. Sinner <laughs> <laughs> bikes. Uh, I, I just see. I, I I mean, if Christian means someone trying to live like Jesus, that's me. Um, but if so many people, I see thinking of people like Kenneth Copeland and uh, I had like three other names. I was, I was read, I was thinking about this as you guys were talking. Joel Steen. I, I wasn't listening. Joel Steen, I mean, he, uh, he's, he's very safe. You know, he would have infuriated me back in the day when I was like full on like doctrine police. Um, he's got his own issues and problems, but just the angry Chris, that super judgmental John MacArthur, his ministry is called grace to you, but he's got grace for almost nobody. Um, those types of people, it's like, I'm not that I, th- like they, they believe something different about what God was doing in Jesus than I do. So where, where is Christian and where's non-Christian? Are you an angels fan? Yeah. <laughs> so, do you know where, do you so know where I'm going? You know, where I'm going with this one, right? Sure. Lay the trap. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> well you're not like all angels fans some right. some are drunk and some are assholes that's the kind you're like and then there's some that are nice and sweet and kind but you're I'm, not like them <laughs> i agree but i'm reasonably sure that even the asshole angel fans don't think i'm going to hell if i'm not a proper angel <laughs> fan yeah that's true uh yankees fans would Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're all Yankee fans. Don't go to heaven. That's obvious. everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. 
No, it's it's good. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm not a Christian, but I just I struggle with that because I I just hate so much about what certain fringe aspects and some of that fringe has large audiences, unfortunately. But most of those people don't aren't like the leader. Most people want the same things I do, which is, you know, healthy family, safe family. They love their country. They they want what's best for the most people possible. We just disagree about how to get there. But man, just some some of the stuff. It just I the only word I can think of, especially Kenneth Copeland, is like demonic. He just the way he yells and I don't know. Oh, I love those the judgment. I love those YouTube videos of him that have have him overdubbed with uh, that dude playing metal guitar. Andre Andres Antunes, something like that. Yes, yeah, I think like that's that his YouTube channel is oh, worth looking up. Dude, can we put it in the show notes? We can. A couple of them. He he has like Karen's going metal. He does everyone going metal, like somebody yelling on the street. Yeah, they're just screaming and yelling, and he puts metal guitar to it and like matches it up perfectly. And full on drums and everything. It's like magical. Yeah, it's wild how he programs that. The internet. That's why the internet was created. So, but I did have. So what what keeps me hooked on to the the God is love and just focus I believe in love I believe in the power of love like pure self sacrificial love will change the world whether or not God is real in the way I think he is and I said I I I think he's real in a certain way but I I don't know that and one of the joys of coming out of my deconstruction is like being very comfortable with the with what I don't know, but still believing certain things. So, okay, what is sac? Okay, you're saying you know I believe in sacrificial love. So, what does that look like for you? App like applied to your life. Someone giving themselves up for the good of the others, and you know the example of Jesus giving himself up on the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. That's that has the real power to change the world. One of the other questions that we won't get to, but is like if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, does that change what would that change for you? For me it wouldn't change much because I know that the more people align themselves with agape love and try to do that in how they raise their families and interact with their community and their work and all that stuff, the better the world gets. Like whether or not God is real. I'm not saying God's not real, but Okay, I'm done with caveating, guys, okay? I caveated too many times. It's over. Okay. The sacrificial, you mentioned, it's. I believe in a sacrificial love, but how does that play out in your life? Like where... I try not to be a dick. Here's my favorite Zach story of (laughs) sacrificial love. Where he's... Zach, and he's going to save you. Yep, I'm going to save you. You're, You're parked outside of our kids school <laughs> in a spot that you probably shouldn't have been parked in oh i know this and some guy is not happy about your park- hey man, parking situation get the hell out of the way and this guy comes up to the window and Dude, just, what are you doing no, was your window down nope but he oh my god he got out of his i see him pull up i i've seen this guy yelling at other parents at other times and this guy pulls up behind me and I was, <laughs> when I parked there, it was at a legal time to park there. And as I was waiting for my child to walk out, enough time had passed where now I'm holding up traffic. I probably should have moved. And this guy pulls up behind me. Go ahead, Andy. And he basically is like, oh, well, no, you, you, I, you oh, t- he, t- he gets yeah, out yeah. and he, he's like walking up to me. I know this is, you see it coming. And what does he say to you? He he comes up and he's he I don't know something about like you're holding up traffic. You know, what are you doing? You got any moves? You're holding up traffic. Come back, 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 Case closed. It broke his brain. He was like, oh. <laughs> he just froze. Yeah, thanks. You mean <laughs> we're done? He was ready for a fight. And if I had said the wrong thing, we might have gotten to a fight. Go, bro. My brother-in-law, Rusty, was in the line in the appropriate part. Um, and 
<laughs> he saw it and he's like, he called me right away after that. He's like, dude, I was so ready. I was going to come fight with you. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just, I just guess. There's my nine. If you speak enneagram, I'm sort of a well, nine. Just great sacrificial love. You're no, just there. tremendous. Speaking of which, have you ever been in a moment with your wife in public where you're like, ah, oh, shit, I got to get in a fight right about now? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, no, because no. No, I have multiple. No. I have multiple of those. <laughs> in my defense, it is me defending her, and both times we're at concerts. Yeah. Oh. The first one was at Coachella. Oh, I thought you meant like you're going to fight with your wife. No, 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 no. Oh, it's, okay. That's what you were no, talking no, about. No, 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 no. No, it's it's me like I'm going to have to I'm going to have to cut a fool. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was someone was mis- mistreating, pushing, shoving my wife in a concert situation and uh I made sure it stopped. The first one was, "Hey asshole, that's my wife." And and I saw the guy's look on his face and it was like, oh, if I would have been like, hey, we just started dating. <laughs> his response might have been a little bit different to be like, I might keep doing what I want to do. Yeah. But hey, this lady, one, it looks yeah. like you don't have a strong man. Yeah. Or it, I think it was more. Yeah. In, in this case, it was like this guy might actually die in the scenario. I think I would probably back off and let her have her space. Um, and then the other one was when I. Uh, grab some guy by the throat as he was shoving Lindsay out of the way. Whoa. I was barely uh-huh. pushing her. And I may have used stronger language and stronger hand motions. Well, this is a children's show, so we'll protect <laughs> the listener from that. Anyway, kids, if you want to get the coloring book, you can click on the link below. It's great. <laughs> now back to Big Bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So. <laughs> That's so funny. When you're mentioning that, you're like... Do you ever get a fight with your wife, like out in public? I'm like, oh no, that doesn't happen. I'll get destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just, I, my wife will just, she'll just, I'm not the one who needs to do anything because she's already like, she's like a Rottweiler no, out that, in public. I know, but those are the things that I'm looking at. Like, I've, I've been in some of those situations where I'm like, oh babe, no, no, chill out. Because if you don't, now I'm gonna, yeah. now I'm gonna have to step in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and well, I, I mean, I took a month of jujitsu, so I'm feeling pretty confident here. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I think we gotta we gotta land this plane. All right, uh, because I think we're I do hear the wheels. C- we are short on time, so we're gonna have to get to the feet washing and the secret sin confession <sighs> and the baptism of a live baby goat later. I had on. a cross that we were able to nail our sins to. Oh, okay. Well, I was just gonna. We're going through the hands, right, or through the wrists. We're going through hands or wrists. Whatever doesn't break the bones. Oh, that's gross. Can't break the okay. bones. I think it's the wrists. But um, I want to get back to my orange. We did do a, a poll on YouTube under the community section. If you subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash bros, Bibles, beer. Or if you search bros, Bibles, and beer, it comes up. But does who does who what does prayer change more? He's eating, he's eating an orange like a monster. Yeah. Yeah, and you, you, Lis, listener, he's eating the orange with like the freaking the he's peel. eating the peel. It's, yeah, dude, you got problems, man. I hope that exfoliates the inside of your colon. How'd the poll go? The yeah, poll went. I don't even. I'm not. I don't know if I can hear what happened in the poll after seeing that. <laughs> I can't unsee that. Jeff, how did the poll go? Yeah. Uh, it was a massive majority. All right, let's do it. Let's just say it. Go cut to it fast. It's a, what does prayer change, God or you? There was only two answers. It was 100% for you or us. Prayer changes us. It doesn't change God, I'm which, glad, which I'm, I like. Because God can't be changed. Our listeners are perfect. <laughs> well, don't ask the Bible that question because God changes all the time, but we'll get that to... Uh, wow. All right. Anthropomorphism. Wow. All right. Um, so, no, what are you consuming this week? We got to wrap it up. Yellowstone. But, man, bro, at Bros Bibles Beer on the socials, youtube.com slash Bros Bibles Beer. Subcri- subscribe. You can go ahead and you don't have to smash. You could actually boop the like button. You could boop subscribe. Bleep. And just make sure you boop confirm subscribe. Beep, pop. Get those notifications so you know when we put out the next video. And I'll just say it. How 
are you a Christian? If you still are, even if you deconstructed, why do you, st- are you still, if you're not, why shoot us an email at bros, at gmail.com or whatever, connect with us, do all those things. You know, we like it. You, you know like the it. Thing. But, um, Jeff, man, you wore this shirt two episodes in a row. I'm pretty sure. You gotta, really? Yeah. You got to pay attention now that we're on video. Jeez, dude. This is not good. God dang it. I thought you were a professional podcaster. I thought we were matching the orange with my shirt tonight. That's what you said. Okay. I mean, I, we can go back and listen to the court reporter. Okay. Hey, Grace. Peace. 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 Cheers. Cheers. We got to work that one out. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll fix it in post. Fix it in post, David.